Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Maria Tepegioso and the topic of my talk is C and D vine based quantum regression. This is joint work with my mentor, Professor Claudia Chada, and the non-parametric approach is joint work with uh, Professor Gerda Klaskens and Ting Zhou from Keolowen. Usual drawbacks of the standard models for quantum regression are among the others, strict distributional assumptions, quantum crossings, and misspecification of the tail dependencies. Our goal is to offer a method that will overcome those drawbacks. A possible solutions are Barvine copulas, as they offer highly flexible modeling of dependent structures. So what is a copula? Um, a d-dimensional copula C is a multivariate distribution function living on the d-dimensional hypercube with uniform margins. Sklar's theorem offers a way to represent any given multivariate distribution in terms of its marginals and the corresponding copula which encodes the dependent structure. To combine copulas and quantile regression, we first look at the definition of the conditional quantile function. For a continuous response variable y and predictors x1 to xp, q alpha is defined as the inverse of the conditional distribution of y given x1 till xp for given alpha in the interval 0, 1. Since copulas only live on the a unit hypercube, we define the scaled values of y and xj to the unit hypercube using the probability integral transform. With the scaled variables, we can now rewrite the conditional quantum function as the composition of the inverses of the marginal distribution of the response and the conditional distribution function of the response given the predictors. Note that in this case, the conditional distribution function is arising from a p plus one dimensional copula corresponding to the joint distribution of the response and the predictors. Assuming the margins are known or estimated, the only remaining thing is to estimate the copula corresponding to the joint distribution of the response and the predictors. However, estimating a d-dimensional copula is equivalent to estimating a d-dimensional multivariate distribution, which is a very complex problem itself. It can be shown that any copula density decomposes into a product of conditional bivariate copula densities. We call those building blocks pair copulas. And going the other way around, it is always possible to also construct a valid joint distribution by specifying the pair copulas and their connections encoded in a sequence of trees. And this method is known as the pair copula construction. In our work, we concentrate on two specific classes arising from the pair copula construction. The first one are drawable wines or D wines. There are three sequences contains only paths. An example of a four-dimensional divine is given in the picture, where the nodes in the first three represent the variables. So we have one, two, three, four, and the edges represent the pair copulas. The joint density specified by this divine specific is obtained as the product of the copula densities corresponding to each edge. Um, a divine tree sequence um, can be characterized by the order of the variables in the first three sequence. Thus, we can define the order of a divine simply as the order of the variables appearing in the first tree. For example, the divine in the picture has the order 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, the next class are canonical vines or C vines. Their tree sequence contains only stars. An example of a C vine in four dimensions is given in this figure. Um, a C vine tree sequence can be characterized by the order of the variables appearing in the root nodes. Root nodes. The specification of the order here is not as simple as for the divines, but it is well defined. And to see how we determine the order of a C vine, we consider this four dimensional example. So we start from the second element of the order. 
It is the root node of the first tree, that is one in this example. The third element is the remaining variable of the root node in the second tree, which is two. Similarly, the fourth element is the remaining variable in the root node of the third tree, basically three. Finally, the last remaining variable four in our example is put as the first element of the order. Now a short intermediate summary about what we talked till now. We start with a data set containing n independent observations from, a, from the random vector v u1 till up. We assume the data is already on the p plus one dimensional hypercube. Otherwise, we simply use the probability integral transform to go to, from the original scale to the hypercube whenever needed. Our goal is to derive a quantum regression model for the given data using copulas. And to do so, the biggest challenge remains estimating the p plus one dimensional copula. In order to reduce computational complexity, we restrict the copula function to the previously introduced C and divine copulas. With this restriction imposed, the problem specifies to finding the optimal order of the predictors. That is, given that the response has to be a leaf and therefore takes the first place in the order by default, we need to find the optimal permutation uti1 to utp of the predictor set u1 till up. Now, the idea to find the optimal permutation is to employ a sequential procedures. Basically, uh, we start with an initial ordering containing only the response. Then at each step, we add one predictor to the order. We continue to do so until all predictors are included or a stopping criteria is employed. To decide which predictor is to be added at each step, we first need a fit measure. In our case, we use the conditional log likelihood defined in equation one. Now coming to the sequential forward selection procedure itself, we consider any given step R of the algorithm. At the beginning of step R, the current optimal order is composed of the response and the R minus one predictors chosen until the R step. Now we choose the art predictor. Now to choose the art predictor, we first conduct a pre-selection based on partial correlations. That is, we define a candidate set K, which contains K predictors with the highest absolute partial correlation measure with the response. Then to determine which predictor from the candidate set to choose, we consider the two step ahead models with orders of this form. UC are the candidate predictors, and UJ is coming from the set of remaining predictors not included in the model. And finally, we choose the art predictor as the candidate predictor, which corresponds to the two step ahead model with the highest conditional log likelihood. Here in the figure, we have a graphical representation of the divine model at step R. We remember that the order of a divine model is equivalent to the order of the elements in its first three. In this figure, we can see the optimal current fit, then the extension by the candidate predictor, and finally the extension to the two step ahead model. The conditional log likelihood is calculated as the sum of the likelihood of the log likelihoods of the pair copulas involving the response variable and that is those so thank you for your attention